Okay, 3, 1 to 3, 2 review. Calculators still are not allowed, and this is number 5. So in number 5, I've given you two functions, u and v, that are differentiable at 2. And then I've given you information about the output of u at 2, the output of v at 2, the slope of u at 2, and the slope of v at 2. And based on these four pieces of information, I now want to compute all of this. So, we will start with a. This says, what's the derivative of 5u over v? Because it is a quotient, that means I'm going to apply the quotient rule. So I will have that derivative will equal my low d high minus my high d low over my low squared. And then I want to evaluate when x is 2. So that means I'm going to have v of 2, which is negative 7, times 5 times the derivative of u, which is 4, minus 5 times u at 2, which is 0, times v prime at 2, which is negative 3. And that is all over v of 2, which is negative 7, squared. So we can see that we can cancel out a negative 7, and we will get a 20 over a negative 7. So now let's look at b. b is a little simpler, because we just do our addition and constant rules, which aren't as complicated as the quotient rule. So I move that derivative through, I'll get a 10u prime plus a 3v prime. If I multiply 10 times the derivative of u at 2, I get a 4. And if I multiply 3 times the derivative of v, I get a negative 3. That'll give me a 40 minus a 9 gives me a 31. So now let's look at c. c is a little bit tougher. Again, we're going to have to do the, pro the quotient rule, and we're going to mix that quotient rule with some addition and subtraction. So we got to kind of keep things straight. So we're going to treat the top as the high and the low, the bottom as the low. So if I write this correctly, I will have low d high. The derivative of this high is u prime plus v prime. So there's my low d high minus my high d low over my low squared. So now that I'm here, I need to evaluate at x equals 2. I forgot to write that up here. So if I evaluate at x equals 2, again, I've got to be careful that I'm putting in what I'm supposed to be putting in. So I've got a u without the derivative, that's a 0. Then I'm subtracting a v, so that's minus a negative 7. Then I'm going to multiply that by u prime, which is 4, plus v prime, which is negative 3. Then I will subtract the u, which was 0, plus the v, which was negative 7, times the u prime, which is 4, minus the v prime, which is negative 3. Put that all over my u, which was 0, minus my v, which was positive 7. And now we're ready to simplify. I'm going to trust that you can crunch through the arithmetic and end up at 8 sevenths. Okay, let's look at the last one, d, which is the toughest of the four. If we look at d here, we're going to have to do the quotient rule and the product rule, because the top of that fraction is a product. It's two things being multiplied together. And that's where most people kind of mess up, is they forget that product rule. So if I want to take the derivative of u times v over u plus v, I'm going to write this one out a little more carefully, a little more slowly. I'll take some intermediate steps here. We will have our low times the derivative of our high minus our high 
times the derivative of our low over the low squared. Now you don't have to do this step, but I know that sometimes when people are trying to take the derivative of a product at the same time that they're putting it into the quotient rule, they tend to get lost. They just have too many terms going on. So if we break it down, this intermediate step, and then take the derivative, it might make it a little easier, less likely to make dumb errors. So I've got this u plus v. I have a u plus v squared. And I have a minus a uv. And now let's multiply by those derivatives that we're figuring out. So if I want to take the derivative of a u times a v, that's the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And if I want to take the derivative of the u plus v, well, that's just a u prime plus a v prime. Now that we're here, we're ready to start plugging in the values when 2 is substituted into each. So that would give me a 0 plus a negative 7 times a 0 times a negative 3 plus v is negative 7, u prime is 4, then I'm going to subtract the u which is 0 times the v, which is negative 7, times a u prime, which is 4, plus a v prime, which is negative 3. And I'll put that all over the u, which was 0, plus the v, which was negative 7, quantity squared. Now notice here I have a 0 times a bunch of stuff, so that's all going to disappear. There's another 0, so I really have a negative 7 times a negative 7 oh, times a 4. And then on the bottom, I have a negative 7 times a negative 7. So that'll all reduce down to a positive 4.